Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of Sports Betting Conversations. Today's episode is titled, How VoxBet Simplifies Sportsbook Navigation with AI-Powered Voice Recognition. And we're very happy to be joined by Jonathan Power, Managing Director at VoxBet, and Ian Marmion, Investor and Board Director at VoxBet. And as always, I'm joined by Kevin Twitchell, Advisor at DataArt. Uh, Jonathan, thanks again for uh, joining us today. Um, Let's start at the beginning. You know, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, well, thanks for having us on. A um, little bit about my our, myself is um, I was in a technology consultancy company, Texas Instruments Software. So you've probably heard of them quite well. Mm -hmm. um, spent a long time with them um, as a consultant to banks on business change systems. And when I left that, I left with a particular thing I wanted to do to enable people to transact from mobile phones. At the time, it was before smartphones, so transacting from mobile phones was. So we were at we were in the window where everybody had a mobile phone, but nobody could use it to do anything other than make phone calls and send texts. Um, and so I had an idea about enabling payments, secure payments over SMS, and um, got a team together for that put a patent together, built the product, and decided that the best use case for it was probably in sports betting and the most likely industry to take a chance on something that hadn't been proven in another industry first was sports betting. So in 2006, for the World Cup, funny enough, we launched a, a product where you could place your bet by sending it a, a text message. Um, and at the time, we thought this is going to become the main way of placing a bet. Um, and then um, we got, as we were rolling that out, um, our lunch was more or less eaten by the smartphone. So we, we ended up with a niche business of those who didn't migrate to smartphones, those who used to continue to phone in their bets. And we had a very nice niche business. We still have it. Um, people who bet with us in 2006 are still betting with us today. Um, we have we place a lot of bets on horse racing um, that are sent in by SMS and um uh, other forms of uh, messaging channels like digital messaging channels like fiber um so we never left the industry and um so over the last number of years what we've been looking at is the whole area of voice technology and to th uh, on the basis that well if you can understand a bet that's been written in a text message maybe why don't we try and understand a bet that has been spoken and get back and to, to make a bigger niche for ourselves and make ourselves more relevant. So that's what we've been focusing on for the last few years. But so that's how we, we accidentally fell into the sports betting industry 16 years ago, and um, we've stayed in it. And it's, 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 it's much more fun than banking. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely sounds that way. Uh, so, so it's interesting because you were kind of, um, um, not forced, but the market kind of made you look at other options, right? Uh, well, not really the market, but the evolving technology around um, phones and uh, mobile devices. Um, yeah, sure. Like a, gra a great quote from, of all people, Mike Tyson, is everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face. So. <laughs> they get punched in yeah. the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Um, so. Uh, yeah, thank you for that overview. Uh, can you go a little bit deeper into you know what Boxbet uh, does and some of the, the the products that that you offer and how how are they how do you differentiate yourself from uh, the competition in the market? Well, we're bringing something novel to the uh, sportsbook user experience. The sportsbook user experience really hasn't changed since it first launched online more than twenty years ago, about more than twenty five years ago. So what we're bringing is a very simple product, which is a little microphone that people can put on their betting site or on their in their app, where um, it's just like the, it'll it'll work very similar to the microphone people use on WhatsApp all the time, or a certain cohort of people use on WhatsApp all the time, which is young people, um, where you press and speak what it is you want, you let go, and there it is, um, which is uh, so that's that's the product we're bringing to the market. And um, we have it working for horse racing at the moment. We're extending it into sport right now, which we'll have um, in the early par part of next year. Um, so it's we're trying to create the a, a, a offer a ubiquity a ubiquitous um, navigation method for people to get what get to where they want to get to on a sports book. So it's a bet mic is, is what we'd call that product. Um, so um, it's as simple it's as simple to explain as that. 
Um, what's in, what's happening underneath is far from simple. Um, and in terms of how that differentiates, it brings it brings a number of um, advantages to the operator and or to the consumer, which um, which is and the first one of those is speed. Is that if you the way you currently navigate a sports book is how you used to navigate the internet with AOL and with Yahoo in the mid nineties, mm-hmm. um, and when Google came along, there were at the time. Google launched, there were 2 million websites. And we did a check on just on one of the customers, operators we work with. And at any one time, there's over 2 million things you can bet on. Um, but we're still using. And when, when a game goes in play, there are many times more than that. Um, so there's you're, you're still offering an AOL-style user interface, which is going through endless clicks of menus to get to what you want to, in a world that moved to Google 20 years ago. Um, So the first advantage is a user experience advantage is speed. Um, But the other thing you can potentially where where it can open up an advantage for operators is it can free up real estate. So at the moment, all the real estate is taken up with content. Um, So that has two things. Well, the direct consequence of that is everybody looks the same. Now, it's not just that everybody looks the same operator to operator, which is true. It also means that your version of, let's say, FanDuel and my version of FanDuel, even though we might bet on completely different things, look identical, 100% identical. So yeah. FanDuel and Twinspires, whatever, they might be 98, 99% identical. But my version of FanDuel and your version of FanDuel and Ian's version of FanDuel are 100% identical. And that doesn't happen anywhere else in the digital world. It doesn't happen in Spotify. It doesn't happen in Twitter. It doesn't happen in TikTok. It doesn't happen on Amazon. But it happens in sports betting. And the reason for that is that there's only one way of navigating the content, which is through endless menus. So all the content is accessible through the same set of menus. And when you do that, you have no room for anything else. But if you can navigate the whole sports book by speaking or typing, by the way, it's not just speak. You can you can type either for those who prefer. Um, you free up probably 90% of the real estate. And that 90% of the real estate should become what's what I like, what I like to bet on, what the bookmaker, what the operator thinks I might be interested in, but what I've also expressly said I'm interested in or not interested in. <laughs> if I went on to a sports book now, I could be offered a bet on tennis. Well, I should be able to, like, not me, but uh, people younger than me would do on Tinder and just swipe left, say, I'm not interested in that, and I won't ever see it again. Mm. Um, that, that should be how I, I should be able to configure say, I'm interested in that. I've bet on that. I've won on this before. Every time this horse is running, I want to know about it. Every time this team is playing, I want to know about it. So, and what over time then, if you can free up the real estate of content and allow for personalization, your version of FanDuel and my version of FanDuel are completely different and which will align sports books with everything else in the digital space. Um, so, and a key part of that is not just about improving user experience for existing players. It's about appealing to young people. Um, young people are being asked to engage with something that is, and this is where Ian might be able to uh, uh, talk a little bit about this because it's one of the real challenges in the business he's involved in. How do you appeal to the young people? They're they're very different. Um, you we could say like. They're so different. They don't even like we thought text messaging was a dream instead of a phone call. But now actually they've gone that further and they they won't even type a message. They'll send it as a voice message. And I guess and that's so why they engage very good. That's why it, it interested me as an investment vehicle when I got involved with with Vocbet first, because the irony of, of how sports betting websites look now is they look the way they do because of how football coupons looked in British betting shops 50 years ago. Uh and and because we're constantly on a treadmill with new jurisdictions and new licenses, and the, actually the opportunity to invest in that UX uh, isn't there because a New Jersey or an Indiana or a Malaysia or a China will always be more important than let's sort out that homepage and, and make it more personable. Uh, so so you know, I looked at this and thought we can do something different here. You know, we can sell the same product in a different manner to a younger cohort and keep them interested in the product and do it like through search and do it through voice and do it through 
through like there isn't another website in the world that we engage in an e-commerce with that we don't have a, a sophisticated search on be it ebay or be it amazon or be it spotify uh, and we I, I, as an investor i saw what the guys were doing and thought yeah they, like someday we're all going to do this uh and you know jonathan told spoke earlier about the ubiquity of 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 that bet mike and I have no doubt we'll get to a point where we'll have thought, how did we never have this before? Uh, and and like we're we're so far behind. Actually, sports betting isn't an incredibly innovative business. Uh, like I've worked in sports betting all my career. Uh, you can name on the fingers of one hand what we've done in an innovative manner in sports. In play was one, cash out was another. You know, I'm struggling. I'm struggling after that. Yeah. Uh, so we're a slow industry. We're a slow industry to adopt. But what you find is, once somebody adopts, everybody adopts. Uh, and I, like I'm, I'm very confident that's where the guys will get to with this. And I think yeah. you're you're spot on. As we look at the U.S. and we look at you know just what we're seeing. You know, we come we data art. We work with the entertainment companies. We work with Spotify. We work with music companies and. In the UK, we've worked with Betfair um, for a long time, you know. But when you see, when you look at the consumer data, data that eighteen to thirty-four year old male, that's that's who's the future of sports betting right now, and they are not looking at the the internet the way we did, you know. Yeah. Like exactly, everything's instant and everything is personalized, and it, they expect it, you know. So I think you're spot on. Um, so when you look. At that, in the complexity of the U.S., with the you know you touched on it, New Jersey, the states, you know, look look ahead. If you come into the U.S., what are your challenges dealing with all those regulations? As I'm driving in my car back and forth on the George Washington Bridge between state to state, how do you how do you geo target me uh, in this world? Have you have you started to address that? Um, there are companies out there who have specialized in that, and mm -hmm. um, I would see those. I would see those as corner cases, right. um, but what the what the point for us is is that the bet mic it sits inside the um, operator's estate. Nothing can happen that doesn't go through the same geolocation checks as anything else you do on their sports book. We're not introducing a new layer of risk for them. We're working inside the framework of risk management that they already have. Um, so, um, in a way, I'm sorry I didn't try and solve that problem because the companies who have, there are very few of them, and they're absolutely cleaning up. Um, but it's not it's not our lane. It's not our lane. Um, sadly, we can work with uh, them. <laughs> yeah, we can. We, we, that's exactly it. We can work with yeah, any of them. Exactly. But, and we're happy to do that. There, there's an added, and we may touch on this later, but there's an added complexity in the states in that sports betting is an expensive product to sell. As it stands, obviously fifty percent tax in New York, but but high taxes everywhere. Right. And the nature of the U.S. sports better is they tend to play handicaps, money lines, over unders, which are tiny margin products. Uh, and and the ability to be able to sell them higher margin products easier has to be a hook for for a lot of these operators. And you you'll have seen the the big push on same game parallels in in the U.S. over the last year. That's not because they, they think the consumer wants wants differentiation. It's because they need margin uh, and yeah. they're high margin products. So the ability to be able to sell them easy, more easily uh, has to be a big hook as well. And I, I've seen that a lot of that recently uh, or, or more than I have in previous months on the apps that I use where they offer these like uh, same game parlays and they look reasonable. Like, like one that I kept losing on over the summer was a, uh, uh, a, a baseball parlay, or no runs mm -hmm. in the first inning across three games, and it's always one team is going to score in the first inning, and, and it looks like pretty simple bet, right? And the odds are great, but yeah, some of them like really suck you in. They look they look pretty pretty good, but um, and they make it easy too, right? In terms of you click a button, you add it to your bet slip, and off you go. You don't have to worry about um, like you know Jonathan was saying, thumbing through you know menu after menu um but if i did have voice capability uh, maybe i wouldn't even look at those you know uh, offers because i think everybody or most people should know the reason they're there is not for you to win right <laughs> it's for it's yeah. for the, the book to make some money but if i have the ability to just say hey give me this this and that um i wouldn't even look at those things 
Yeah, I think the operators know as well. If you keep losing, you'll just stop playing. Is that I think they, 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 I think they want you to spend a hundred dollars and get ninety back. Is um, and having having had a lots of a lot of fun, but um, yeah, it's uh, I used it to work. To I used to work for a game, hoping there's no run. I used yeah. to work for an old school bookmaker many years ago called Victor Chandler, a very famous European bookmaker, British bookmaker. And Victor used to say, "Give me a million players betting a, bo- a pound rather than one player betting a million." Uh, and, and you know that, that's that's what we're trying to get to, right? So it's added right. value, it's entertainment, and and you don't mind how slow they lose that dollar as long as they lose that dollar, right? Right. So going back to me driving in my car, I'm thinking. So when you're in the in car experience, you know, listening to baseball, which I did growing up, and this year just being enamored by the World Cup and driving my kids to their sporting events, being in the car. How soon are we to me be able to? make that bet while I'm driving, you know, well, you know, working with the apps, you know, listening to a radio or a radio experience or, you know, a serious satellite experience, which I'd listen to all the world cup on. Yeah. It's something we discovered as we got into, and uh, when we really decided to go all in on voice with the business is that there are many, many different paradigms of what can happen or what, how, how that should look. And the paradigm we've gone for to start with is a bet, mic. Um, that you press and hold and speak, and then yeah. we show you what it is you ask for, and then you tap, that you complete the transaction when you tap. And the reason we've picked that one is we think it's the most common use case. Of course. Is yeah. that it saves me having to trudge through layers and layers of menus. But the, there's two after that that we're going to do, and one of them is the one you've just mentioned, and we call that paradigm the hands-free paradigm, which is you're, you're cooking, you're listening to the, the podcast, uh, previewing the games, and you think, I want to have a bet here. Mm-hmm. And if I have to take out my phone with that chopping chicken or whatever it is I'm doing, but my hands aren't free, I'm driving, um, I should be able to line that bed up by just speaking it. And um, mm-hmm. even if it then has to come come through via a personalized push notification that I press on, there's the bed slip. There's my with pretty populated with my stake and everything. So the location check can be done because the bet in the US at least must happen on platform. Um, if the US and Australia would be would have that restriction, but in many other places it wouldn't. It it can happen via a direct messaging channel without having to go through the the uh, location checking. So that's so that's one of the paradigms we're going to work on next year, which is hands free. And another one where we see is um, in play, so in game. So you're so you're watching streaming, and at the moment they split the screen between. The bit you can watch the on the action on and a half a screen on things you can bet on, which are pre-formed by the by the operator to say these are the things you're probably going to want to bet on, which tend to be the low margin products. Um where it should be the whole screen should be taken up with the action and with a little mic in the corner that you press and speak what it is you want, and it'll just continue the um the journey from there. So they're the so we're starting off with the bet mic experience, which you press and speak, see what it is you want. We're moving into um, the hands-free experience, uh, and that'll be late the second half of 2023. And from there, we're very keen on the um, the streaming experience where the whole real estate can be taken up with the action and the betting experience can be condensed into a mic. So they're the three paradigms we're going after. But from a concept perspective, guys, the Sorry, Jonathan, you, you you may have got onto this, but the guys have already built a skill within Alexa to deliver a bet through Alexa. Uh, oh. So so actually, the technology is there. Uh, it's just a case of adaptation. Uh, and it's really, we we presented it at a uh, director's board meeting one day where we just took the Alexa out and said, "Hey, Alexa, uh, what do you want to bet on?" So we so we're able to complete that whole transaction. Uh, but obviously, it's baby steps to get us there. Yeah, that yeah, I can see that them. in our house with my 18 year old boy because you know he doesn't turn on the light without talking to Alexa. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's it's you know already they've already they don't even know how to turn on a light without you know Alexa or ask the weather. You know, might as well place a bed. And they don't know how to turn off a light actually. At, well, no, with, I know. I get with, the or with, with or without Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was actually one of the questions I jotted down <clears throat> is about like integration with uh, Siri. Yeah, or, or or Amazon uh, in terms of doing the voice. Um, now, now what you know the uh, 
as, as your, your product rolls out across sports books, you know, hopefully here in the States soon, uh, you know, something I, you know, I'd love to, to use myself. Uh, d- do you see um, any um, issues with uh, kind of the, the safer gambling uh, side of things? Like, are there, will there be any pushback from, you know, uh, any regulatory commissions or compliance? Because, you know, what has recently happened here, um, you know, with, with sec- this is a separate issue with security. They're, they're starting to mandate, uh, uh, you know, two-factor authentication um, in some states. I think Jersey is one. Kevin actually just recently mm-hmm. put it in place. Yeah. Uh, and New York, it's an option. Um, right. Like I, I got messages across all my sports books like, hey, turn this on. Um, but uh, what's safe for gambling, uh, I know some sports books have gotten into trouble about saying that, oh, we have, you know, free bets and risk free bets. And it, it, it makes it sound like, you know, you can't lose money. Um, but, you know, this product will make it much easier to bet and quicker, which is great for, you know, somebody who, who likes to do it. But but from, you know, kind of a, a compliant or a, reg- a regulatory perspective, they might look at it and say, well, do we want to make it that easy? Right, so folks don't get in trouble. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, that's a really, that's a good question. That's yeah. a good question, Russell. And it does come up. Um, it does come up when we talk to people. And I've, I've there's two sides to my answer to that. One is I've already touched on, and um, we work inside what whatever restrictions are already in place within the app. We don't. We're, we're not away around the fence. We are inside the fence. And the second one is well, we can't know yet. But unless regulators think a bad user experience is a good form of in, um, enforcing responsible gambling, um. I don't see an issue. Um, I think making reducing the friction in an online journey. Um, so it's probably is, fair. yes, it does make it easier. But I don't think for, I don't. I really would be surprised if regulators are going to go down the route of saying, "Let's keep a bad user experience, guys." It might reduce. Um, it might it might reduce problem gambling. I it, that would be illogical to me. But you know, it's probably it's probably best answered by me as an operator, which is I guess my day job. So be under no illusions, the US is going to have a major kick in the ass with respect with respect to responsible gambling at some point. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the lack of regulation and the lack of the lack of, of transparency around it over there <laughs> is scary. Uh you know, even down to you follow the Twitter accounts of all the major books. Uh we laid 300 grand on this, we laid 500 grand on that, you know, mattress back having his couple of million on. You just wouldn't get away with that narrative in the UK at the minute. Uh, so, so there's going to be a big push a, around responsible gaming at some point. But the function of how you bet should never be a part of that. Uh, so the controls, look at, at the end of the day, bookmakers deal with consumers and you want to give consumers the least friction, the least friction experience that they can have. Yeah. You got to do that in a safe and responsible way. Of course you do. Uh, but the technology isn't going to determine that, or the, the UX isn't going to determine that. It'll be something a lot deeper. Uh, but I, I promise you, uh, and I know this is a, isn't a, a, a responsible gaming podcast, but the, the train that's coming down the tracks in the US to me is scary. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can definitely see that um, because uh, speaking to folks in that industry Kevin and I have, you know, in the past and we, we've met you know, many of them. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem, uh, you know, like, like there's a, I would say structured and developed, uh, you know, process or way to, to handle that. It, it, it's state by state, you know, some, some States a little bit more, you know, loosely regulated than other States, um, but uh, I, I see yeah, eventually that becoming a problem as more users are, are onboarded and as more states go live. Yeah. Because you have the complexity right there because you are an entertainment option, you know, so you have families involved. There's a lot of there's a lot of age regulations. You can see the government coming in at some point on a high level, you know, the way they regulate the FTC, the way they regulate content. You know, the way they, you know, regulated music at one point and movies. And at some point, there, you know, there will be some kind of national regulation, I'm sure. And by the way, rightly so. Like, right. you know, we've we've probably over-regulated this side of the pond now. Uh, and the UK has become a very difficult market to do business in as a consequence. But the reason we've over-regulated is I've, I've worked in the industry 
nine and thirty years, we got away with too much uh, in the old days, uh, and we we and we didn't care. We I guess we didn't understand, but we certainly didn't care. Uh, and 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 now that 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 chick has come home to roost, uh, and I, I can very much see the same thing happening in in the US. Like at the end of the day, sports betting for me should be an entertainment industry. Uh, you should never sell the you can win at this. You should always sell the you know there's added value here. Uh, there used to be a, a great slogan from Ladbrokes in the eighties where on the election and it said uh, everyone could tell you they knew the result of the election. Only a man with a Ladbrokes betting docket can prove it. Uh, and that's really where we should be, you know. Uh, and and uh, I think our industry would be the better for it. But but there's definitely some rocky ground ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. Uh, so the last thing, and we, we can ask all our guests uh, this this question is, uh, and I think uh, we've already chatted about it a little bit, but um, what do you see happening in the next like year or two in the sports betting market? Um, and you know, UK or US or, or both is fine for your predictions. <laughs> I think. Th- I- go on, Jonathan. Yeah, what, what I'll start with, I'll start with that from a technology point of view and, and let Ian talk about that from an industry perspective. And from a technology point of view, um, and obviously I, it, it's, it fits the category, of course, you would say that. I really think there is um, um, the next ubiquitous tool in the industry is the one we are offering it. Um, so Ian said he can't think of uh, innovations beyond there's been three major innovations in the industry in the time in in the last 15 years uh, since it went online and um, the first one was in play the second one was cash out and the third one was in game parlay um and within within about six to 12 months of the first one say making proving the success and popularity of it they all have it and they're the only three we can think of. Um, so one of the things I think over the next one to three years, you're going to see it's going to click, um, especially as like um, I think a stat from uh, the end of last year was 42% of under 35s, no, 52% of under 35s use voice technology every day. In um, in five years' time, that's not going to be 52% of under 40s. It's going to be much higher than that. This is um, that the, the the, this is that this is a snowball, mm-hmm. um, and so that's what I'd say on a technology side of things. And I think Ian would have um, more, perhaps more interesting insight from the um, operator and industry side of it. Yeah, so I think uh, look, if we deal with the US specifically, uh, I think you continue to see a a, a big growth in in, in play. Uh, so in play accounts for about seventy percent of the business in in Bet three six five now uh, over here. Uh, once they get aggressive in the US market, you'll see a big growth in that. Uh, and if you look at companies like PointsBet who've invested in Bannock Technology to to build their in play models and, and make it a cutting edge experience, uh, the reason for that is you're trying to convert gambling into gaming in effect. So you're trying to create almost a slot machine effect where you can bet on. You know, result in the next play. Uh, will, will he kick the, the Will he kick the extra point or not? You know, all these what we call minute markets over here. Uh, I think on a, ma- a more macro level, you're going to see a big growth in the non traditional markets. Uh, so I do a lot of work in Africa now, uh, and Africa is one of the biggest growth markets from a sports betting perspective. Uh, and the reason sports betting is great is uh, almost without exception you're selling the same product everywhere like it it is effectively soccer uh it, uh, and everywhere outside of the us uh i think i think africa will be a big growth market latin will be a very big growth market and i think you'll see some of the middle and east middle east and asian countries open up as well and i think you'll see the likes of of flutters and the intents of the world turning the focus to to non-traditional markets where there's more juice left in the lemon uh, there's very little juice left in the lemon in, in, in the UK now. There's certainly very little juice left in the lemon in, in the US unless you've got Fangio's lemons. Uh, uh, so I think you'll see people turn turn to different markets a little bit more. I think we'll still sell the same product. Uh, you know, in the US, it'll be you know dominated by football uh, and then supplemented by, by basketball and, and soccer. And I think over here, it'll continue to be, you know, soccer dominated uh, and then supported by local sports. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, in, in a non-traditional markets, is, 
Um, is it uh, easier to gain entry there or are the regulations more strict or how is that forming? Uh, so I guess that's how long is a piece of string. But so uh, I, I now work with a company called 888 Africa, uh, where we've licensed the 888 brand uh, to go into the, the African market. We're live in Tanzania, Mozambique, Zambia, and Kenya, uh, and all very regulated, uh, but certainly not with the strenuousness of, of the UK market, but all, all, all fully regulated uh, and a very different consumer as well. And uh, it's the first time I've worked in that market, but they effectively play the lottery on soccer every week. Uh, so they have tiny, tiny stakes. So our average stake there is less than a dollar. Uh, but they'll, their average number of selections is 10. Uh, so they're trying to have a 10 team parlay every week to, to win the jackpot. Uh, so it's a really, really interesting market. They love, there's a, there's a concept over there that isn't anywhere else at the minute really called crash games, uh, which are eye gaming. But in effect, the, the most popular game is a game called Aviator. Uh, you bet and then the plane takes off and you've got to cash out before the plane flies away. Uh, and it's the most simple wow. look. And it's the Great. simplest, lowest data game. So data is an, is an expense in, in Africa that we don't tend to have. So they want low data. Uh, and uh, uh, Google it and, and go and play it. I showed it to a couple of my friends when I was away recently. And the guy spent an hour and a half playing the free-to-play version. Uh, it's just absolutely addictive. It's a great game. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, very, very, very different market. And and, and the one of the most interesting things for me over there is, is the simplicity of their payments. Uh, because they do everything through the mobile networks. So, so they have mobile money wallets and everything is done through the mobile phone. Uh, so they don't tend to hold bank accounts. They don't have ATM cards. Uh, if you want to withdraw money from an ATM, you go onto your mobile network, you tell them what ATM machine you're at, how much you want, it gives you a code, you put the code in and get your money out. Sure. Uh, so, so, so in actual fact, it's, it's, it's quite advanced in, in, in that perspective. Uh, but yeah, look at, as I say, I've, I've been in the industry 30 years and I've worked in a very traditional market all my life. It's the first time I've moved into a non-traditional market and uh, and really every day is a school day. That's great. That's very interesting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see some of that innovation, at least in, in the state. <laughs> uh, definitely makes things easier. Um, well, yeah, this has been great, uh, Kevin. Do you have any? Uh, no, this is a great chat. We could go all, we could chat all day. I feel like we should. Yeah, yeah I feel I'm like... Boring. Literally, we just go to the pub. Yeah, you know, I want to meet you guys in person and and hit a pub and and really start. Uh, we'll come over to Ireland. How's that? So, sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we've lots of choice. Yeah, this is great. Great, great talk on technology and sports, and we're going to be uh, staying in touch. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you both, Jonathan and Ian. Appreciate it. Yeah, really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks thank for you. Thanks, great. thanks for inviting us.